लाइव मोहित अपन लाइव है लाइव मोहित अपन लाइव है वे आर लाइव आई गेस इज फेसबुक लाइव मोहित इफ यू कुड जस्ट गिव मी अ सेकंड और यस वी आर लाइव ऑन फेसबुक ओके so to the people who have joined welcome we will be waiting for 2 to 3 minutes for others to join and then we will start Well, till that time, Ankush, why don't you tell me about uh, how are things holding up in the US? Things are normal the way it should be. <laughs> Keeping okay. in mind it's the US. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, it's just uh, in the next couple of weeks there are US elections. Uh, so yes, yes. A lot of from work perspective, we are focusing a lot on that. Even from like you know news and how things are going on, people are focusing mm -hmm. a lot on that. because it's september and in the first week of november they'll be voting the uh, the interesting thing is so the way it happened in us is so once you cast your vote they announce mm -hmm. the winner on the same day in the evening but given the pandemic so this time the results are expected to be delayed so which okay. creates a lot of room for i don't know fraudulent activities or like you know bogus voting and all so that is something yes. which is being worked on or like you know uh being figured out by the government but other than that yeah it's normal business as usual for everyone <laughs> well uh, here in india we are since have we like we have already begun this unlocking stage we're opening up slow and steady but still cases on a rise <laughs> so how are your classes happening like do you guys go to attend in do you guys go to the college the like you know in the departments or does it happen online oh uh, no 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 everyone is at their home right now so we have google classroom and we have microsoft teams okay and uh, we have set up an our own uh, you know this uh, interactive educational module known as moodle so mm -hmm. online classes and moodle that's how it goes Okay, so I guess we should start. It's already uh, six thirty-five. Okay, I guess my internet is an issue over here. I think I might be able to do better.
Hello, Ankush, am I audible? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So I think we should begin. So I welcome all of you to the Ask Me Anything session hosted by the GNU Linux Users Group, NIT Durgapur. Today we have with us Mr. Ankush Singla. He has completed his graduation in Biotechnology Department from NIT Durgapur. He was a part of the first biotechnology branch of this college. His MBA degree from Punjab University, and he is currently a data analyst at Facebook based in Austin, Texas. So, well, uh, going ahead, uh, let me ask you this uh, question first. Why is it assumed that core branch students cannot land a job at renowned software companies? And uh, how did you achieve this? Uh, you're on mute, I guess. Thank you, Rajas, for the introduction. So uh, as Rajat, uh, sorry, as Rajas mentioned, I would like to uh, talk a little bit about myself and what I do, and then we'll move on to the question that Rajas has asked. So uh, as he mentioned, I completed my graduation in biotechnology, but due to the global financial crisis in 2007 to 2009, I was not able to land a job. So in that case, I got a lot of free time with myself because there was nothing for me to do. And I ended up preparing for MBA, got admission in Punjab University. Uh, so moving on after the course, I was able to, uh, I, I got a placement in Infosys in consulting. I worked in Infosys for a couple of years and then, then joined Facebook Hyderabad. So I worked in Hyderabad again for a few years and then move to Austin where I'm working as a data analyst. So my day-to-day -day job involves uh, data mining, conducting analysis, and the presentation of data to see beyond the numbers to better understand the operations and how things are. Other than that, my role also entails uh, monitoring key metrics, designing experiments, and building reports and dashboards. So all in all, I would, I'm really glad to be here and having this QA with you all. Would love to answer your questions, your thoughts, whatever you have. Feel free to ask anything, guys. And then let, moving on to the question that Rajas has asked. So, regarding the core companies and the biotech, uh, regarding the uh, students from the core companies to the software jobs, I would say, I can say the way it has happened in, uh, in our times, like I'm not sure how things would have changed by now, but I feel that. At that time, it, it would be relatively difficult for our students from mechanical, civil, or like, you know, chemical branches to go to a high tech companies like, you know, uh, Google, Microsoft, or Amazon. But having said that, to get into that, they need to start, if not at that level, but maybe the normal IT companies that we have in India, like, you know, the IT consulting companies like, TCS, Infi, Cons uh, Cognizant, Accenture, because a lot of these companies, they, they don't really need, they don't care what your background is because they would be training in on their own softwares or, or on their, like, you know, on, on modules. So in that case, I would say for the people who have studied a lot in their core branches, it might be difficult to get started with the Hi, uh, with the like you know top tech companies but if you really want to work in the top tech companies you might want to start with the relatively smaller companies like a baby step and then move your way up to the different companies that you would really like to work in now well, that was fantastic like sharing insight about this industry as well you know yeah it is like to small start and then grow big Companies like a baby step and then okay, uh, move your yeah, way up moving to on the to the uh, next question. Really like uh, again, Ankush, you have completed your MBA after engineering. Now that was uh, a career thought, like which sharing most insight of us have. about this industry. So, as well. could you share a light no, on yeah, how pursuing an MBA can and change one's career and how did you prepare for it? Okay, uh, yeah, moving on to the uh, next question. Sorry. Uh, again, uh, I would Ankush, say that, you've completed your so MBA after engineering. Not to pursue uh, a career MBA thought which most of us have. After engineering, it because of the circumstances, I had to do that. Otherwise, my original plan was to uh, to complete graduation, work for, work in industry for a couple of years, and if I feel like, then pursue MBA. 
but because of like i said the crisis and things happen because circumstances force you to change your plans which happened with me and so in that case i ended up preparing for mba the reason why mba is a good thing because if you are working in a certain i tell you why i prefer or why i thought about pursuing mba earlier after getting some experience in the industry because if i if i started working in any it company or any biotech company or for that matters any other company if i want to switch from that Uh, say if i'm working in a core company but i want to move into consulting if i'm working in a it company but i want to move into sales mba provides you that opportunity because in mba you learn all of these different things otherwise it would be very difficult for a person who has gained 2 to 3 years of experience in uh, in it consulting and in it software and then move on to sales and marketing or then move on to consulting because mba provides that opportunity where whatever you want to move on to Uh, you can take a break work on mba for a couple of years and then move on to that industry having said that in my case i uh, like i said i had a lot of free time because i did not have a job and after graduation there was and it's not a i can say that it's not a really kind word out there for the freshers so even when you have passed out from uh, nits or iits it's it's not easy to land a job after, on your own so uh, that's why i would say having a campus placement is preferred but but having said that uh, that's how i ended up preparing for uh, mba and then then again like you know from there i went on to take a, a campus placement and things things uh, worked out from there so i would say depending on wherever you are or how do you want to uh, pursue your career if you are interested in masters and you can do that college is the best time to do that because after you have started working it's really not easy you have to put a dedicated time to study which would which might be like you know uh, which might be tricky after that okay wow that was very insightful again and again uh, so yeah jo another thing i would surely like to ask you about your college life in nit durgapur here like most of our viewers are from nit durgapur right now watching you and since you are a batch of 2009 so they'll surely like to know what their college was so college experience i would say so my let me put it this way so in the if you are a first year or a second year student i would recommend enjoy that's the only time we You you will get in third years. You will start worrying about your placements. You'll start worrying about your internships. First and the second years are the only time where you don't have to worry about those things. So spend as much time with your friends, whether you like playing online games with your peers or whether you like do whatever you want to do because you will make best friends from the college. and it's difficult to make friends beyond the college because i have worked uh, like after graduation i did masters it's not that easy to make that good friends in masters and then in professional world it's you are lucky if you are able to make good friends in professional world because otherwise i would say in my case we used to hang out with my peers and we used to go out to jupes if that still exists and then techno was the place where we used to have long discussions and online games those were the things we used to do in college but otherwise just just spend time with your uh, with your friends with your roommates and i would say just do whatever makes you happy because but do make friends that's that's thing which i would strongly recommend because those friendships will last longer than anything else uh, all those things you will move countries you will move jobs you will move you will move places and all but your friends will always be there it's irrespective where you are so that's what i would say in college enjoy well ankush uh, techno and jupe still stand and uh, they are lifeline of college students of course well again uh, moving on uh, we have sharman pal who is asking uh, sir how much weightage would you give to your mba and work experience in infosys for banging a job in facebook hmm so uh, okay uh, mba and work experience in infosys so what i would say is that uh, like i mentioned earlier as well 
it's not a kind word for the fresher so you need to have experience uh, like you know whether it is whatever company it is whatever role that you are working in that's a separate thing but you really need to have experience it's not easier like in my i can say that all the tech companies that i like you know follow or that i have friends in most of the companies they don't entertain freshers like either they have set colleges or set spaces where they go for freshers but otherwise all of them prefer people who have certain work experience so work experience does help for sure in terms of the other uh, regarding the mba so my mba helped me to move into consulting uh, in infosys versus if i would have gone from a graduation uh, from uh, from college from durgapur i would have gone as a software developer so the mba helped me to get a role in consulting and then that consulting helped me to understand the professional world how things work and uh, like you know uh world how things work what you need to do to uh, to like you know i don't know to grow in your career in terms of the facebook what i would say is that not just facebook i would say the top tech companies if you guys would have heard of the defense sector in india right i would give a i usually compare these things the landing a job in top tech companies with landing a job in the defense sector so the people who work in the defense sector the defense sector has a really set criteria like you know whatever those criteria are uh, if you if a candidate fits in that criteria you will get it if you are not fitting in that criteria they are happy with the low staffing that they have same goes with the companies in these like you know these tech companies for example facebook and all an interview and after the interview my roommates at that time they asked me they were very excited how did it go like you know how was the experience the experience was amazing of course and i wasn't really sure whether i'll be able to convert it or not because it was more of a discussion rather than q and a they asked me questions they i try to answer them and then if then that's what i figured that if i fit into their criteria i'll be able to go through it if i was not able to fit into their criteria they'll be like yeah okay thanks. so i would say right time right place it works out for me mb helps me to get a consulting role the consulting experience helps me to understand the professional world which effectively helps me to land a job in facebook but that's not the only thing it these are just like you know i have uh, other peers who have come came from different sectors it's just whether you are able to fit into that criteria which uh, that's how you will be able to land a job wow like i'm sure uh, most of our viewers will make use of this information and many of them seek internships and job at this point of time okay so we have um, supratik sen sharma who is asking what is your idea about the shelf life of engineers in this tech industry uh the shelf life of the engineer is up to the engineer uh, so the the reason why i say so because tech keeps on changing you need to upskill yourself with the with the new things that are coming in the industry if you're not able to upskill yourself then then you are not really relevant to the industry so all the new things all the new technologies that are coming up and i can i can tell you that all of uh, i won't say all of a lot of my peers they keep on learning new things whether through different online courses or whether through company or whether like you know taking up uh, taking a virtual course with some universities you need to keep yourself up to date with the new things that's how you will keep yourself relevant in the industry if you are not keeping yourself up to date then it would be difficult for you to survive in the industry and it doesn't matter whether you are working as a engineer or whether you are working as a manager in the industry it doesn't really matter because you need to share what are the or at times if you are at a senior leadership you need to create those drive those trends you need to see what uh, anticipate what could happen in the industry and based on that you will have to like you know take up those solutions so keeping yourself uh, upskilling yourself and making sure you are learning every like you know on the go that is the most important thing and that's how people live their life and that's why companies pay a lot more to the engineers because they work on the solutions which are unique and different and they turn it around very quickly yes for sure <laughs> okay moving on uh, we have aditya mitra who is asking ki uh, sir uh, what are the future prospects of data analysis and what is the emerging field which you think would be at its peak 
in a period of say five to ten years. Wow, I don't know about the five to ten years of peak. Uh, what what would that be from data analysis point of view? What I can say is that uh, data is something which is big in today's world like you know whether you call it big data whether you call it a role of a data engineer or data analyst any any like you know top companies or, or not just top companies any other company they would need data to work on any solution to create any solution or to create any new product any of any good company that you talk about they would need data so if you when you need data you need people to who understand that very well and who are able to see beyond the numbers rather than just what it is telling us. So I think understanding of data and uh, from data analysis, data analysis perspective, it's a there is a I don't see that those things are going to slow down in the next upcoming next couple of years. That is going to grow and all the companies. And there are a lot of people who are taking up different data roles, like you know, as a data scientist or a, as a data engineer or data analyst in 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 the global companies. So I would say that uh, data is something which is going to be there. You need to learn the tools so that you will be able to grow in the data field if you are interested in. The other thing which you talk about uh, in the next five to ten years is, I would say. Uh, Virtual reality, automation reality is something which is uh, which is one of the big things is coming up because as people are working from home, they would like to have all those experiences from their home. So that's why there is a lot of opportunity in the AR and VR area, and not many many companies have invested in that space. So that is something which I would say uh, can look forward to and how things would play out. Uh, what else that I can think of but yeah i would say that the and then uh, yes the other thing which i would say is also employee welfare uh, or like you know how comfortable an employee is when working from resiliency the overall well-being of an employee that is something which is the emotional quotient i would put it that way not just intelligent intelligence quotient the emotion emotional quotient is very very important a lot of companies have started investing in that i like i know from a couple of my friends who work in india a lot of companies in india don't pay that much of attention but that is something which i would see could play a lot more important role down the line okay i'm sure uh, the upcoming batch of engineers and managers will surely take care of your views okay uh, we have this next question from siddharth agarwal he asks uh, how would you differentiate between the role of a data analyst and a data scientist? There is a subtle difference between the role of data analyst or data engineer or data scientist. So there are there are some very specific things that a data engineer do. There are some very specific things that an analyst do. So uh, from a data analyst perspective, I can say that uh, I do I conduct a lot of root cause analysis to understand why we are moving in a particular direction what is happening in that direction so that is something which which is kind of core to data analyst not not necessarily core to data engineer or a data uh, data scientist data scientists will focus relatively more on the solutions or designing experiments i won't say the data analyst cannot do that but there there are some core things that each of the people will do, but there is a lot of overlap between what data analyst or a data engineer would do. And same goes with data scientists. But overall, they all of them can do what each, uh, what the other person is doing. The difference is not very very much. Uh, like you know, you if you are a data analyst, it, it's not a uh, difficult for you to move to a data engineer role. If you are a data engineer, it's not difficult to for you to move to a data scientist role because, uh, like I said, the tools that they use they are pretty common. The uh, like you know the things that they do the, the job responsibilities they are very common among each other so that's why these are the things which are common to all of them but there are some core things which are unique to each of them okay well so uh, i guess you can excel in one and then even switch yeah so is that possible or is that a thing yeah it's okay i would say it's it's if you have learned 
the tools, the things that you are expected to do in one of those roles, it's not difficult. It's it's relatively much easier to move to a different role. But the thing, what I what I would say is that it's not something which people usually do because you are pretty much doing the same things that you will end up doing in a different role. And so, uh, if you are if you are starting as a data scientist in one company, and if you are moving to another company, and they are of offering you a role of a a data engineer or data analyst, I won't say there is going to be a lot more difference in that. So moving in these roles, depending on the company, how their structure or organizational hierarchy is, I don't think it's a big deal. OK, um, well, uh, since most of our viewers are currently students, they will uh, surely like to know like what are the skills which we can learn at this point in time? like. The college students can learn so uh, so as to become a data analyst, like the crux of it. Oh, to become a data analyst from a college student, wow, that's interesting. So I would say that uh, back in the day, I had no idea whether I I'm planning to be a data analyst or anything to do with data. The the I, I'm I'm really glad and amazed that like you know the kind of questions or the way people are thinking right now like you know you're you guys are talking about how to become a data analyst when you are in like you know in college at that time i i can tell that people in my batch they had no clue about what what they should be doing or what they would like to do having said that so uh, in terms of data analyst so i would say that there are a lot of online courses that you can take on i'm not sure if the college curriculum has been updated that way but there are a lot of online courses you can learn basic languages like Python or like you know SQL or other databases out there. So these are the simple. Th these are easily available things for people that they can learn on via LinkedIn or other online websites. So those are the basic things that th those are the stepping stones into the data world. Because if you don't, know, if you know these things, it would be a lot easier. It would be relatively easier. You would have a, some advantage to excel in your role, whatever it is. But but on the whole, I would say if you have not, if a person has not done masters in data, uh, in like you know data course or something, it would be difficult to land a data job as a fresher. I'm not saying it's not impossible. It would be difficult, but after gaining some experience in industry, if you have done these courses, it would be easier. That is something we should everyone make a note of. Uh, this is going to sound very different since you were the uh, first biotechnology uh, branch student in NIT Durgapur. We have this one question that, uh, like, did you ever take interest in biotech? And did you ever think of uh, moving into bioinformatics? Bioinformatics was one of the course in my fifth semester, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so interest in biotech. So, okay. The reason why I end up taking biotechnology because it was it was considered boom at that time, like you know, uh, twenty years ago, the way computer science was considered boom. So I thought, yeah, I mean, why not? I can see, I see what it is and how it would be. So, uh, but on the way on in my four years in college, I realized that my batchmates are a lot more smarter and they have a lot they have a better understanding of the biotech world as compared to me i'm not saying that i was a bad student i was a okay student but they had a better understanding and i did not have that kind of passion so i'm not saying that i was not there but when you see the people who are passionate about the work that they do the industry that they are in you realize that this is something which might be difficult for you down the line you might i i might i might have started with any biotech company, but it would have been relatively difficult for me to grow in that unless I would have developed that kind of passion. passion sorry. And also what I can say is that the people who have that kind of passion, all of them ended up doing masters and PhDs and other things in the biotechnology field. But they were not everyone ended up doing that. People who took biotechnology as a course, uh, like, you know, in Durgapur, very few of them are in biotech, but at that time, when they joined biotech, they, they wanted to join biotech, not like me, who was like, OK, let's see what it is. So that is one thing which I would uh, like, you know, call out in terms of uh, whether I had interest or not. I won't say I, I didn't know much about biotechnology, but I was willing to give it a shot and work on it as we go. The other thing is 
there are a lot of bioinformatics companies uh, like you know i i would say there are a lot of biotech companies or pharmaceutical companies who overlap with the kind of studies that uh, that the college offer to a biotechnology student but again the challenge is a lot of these companies would prefer a master's student rather than a bachelor student so that is one thing so if you want to go, grow in the biotechnology field you should think about going for a masters that is kind of by default and then after masters uh, it depends what your interest is you might have to go for a phd or so the thing is there is a lot more time that you have to spend into academics before you enter into industry if you want to enter into industry so that is something which i would say uh, like students should think about if they are if they are interested in biotechnology at that time i did not have that kind of patience that i wanted to go in to pursue masters in biotech or in bioinformatics and then possibly a phd so that's the reason i did not like you know i would say that i did not end up in any bioinformatics or biotech industry but having said that the kind of work that i'm doing a lot of biotech companies do similar kind of work so i can still there is an opportunity for me there is a room for me where i can move into those companies and do data specific role rather than bio biotech specific role okay wow like that was something very interesting to hear about now uh, given the fact that you worked in india and now you are currently working in the us so uh, we have aman who is asking what is your perspective on the difference in work culture in india to that of of working in foreign country uh the biggest culture shift is uh the work life balance in in us the employers the companies the people play uh, people emphasis a lot on your work life balance like you know if you're working from say 8 to 6 or 8 to 5 whatever that is uh, after 6 or 7 pm people expect that you would have your family time they would give you your space it's not like that you're expected to work 12 hours a day that's not something which is which is normal in us excluding certain industries for sure but in general that's not a regular practice but in india what i have seen is that working for 10 to 12 hours is a is a like a norm over there like you know everyone ends up that that's a common practice over there and work life balance is something which is difficult to achieve in india it's relatively easier to get to achieve in in us like you know because employers your peers they all prefer their own personal time and they would expect you to have your own personal time as well that is something which is not a very common practice in india uh, work life balance is one and uh in general the other thing which i would say is that people also respect you as a as a person as who you are they they value you as a human being and uh and care about like you know what you do what you believe in what you think they respect that they value that and then they they would like you to be yourself wherever you are whether it is in the workplace whether it is like you know outside the workplace but a lot of people a lot of companies in india what i have seen is that they you are just one another employee for them so that is one thing which like you know which i have observed i'm not saying like i said these this is these are generic statements and, and i'm not saying every other employer does that but these are the things which i have observed and seen in indian professional world versus a us professional that is uh, point of difference uh where well, we have uh, sharman pal who is asking about do you have any regrets about something you did in your career which right now in introspection you deem it as unnecessary i don't know there are a lot of regrets <laughs> there is not one <laughs> so uh, so i would say that uh, retrospectively when you look back at things you would always think that i could have done that differently or i could have done that better but i would say that at that time based on what i knew or based on what i thought i took the right decision or i took the decision which i thought was the best for me or like you know so i think that if i go back in that time i might end up taking the same decisions because that is what i knew at that time but yes now i can see that at that time like i said i pursued biotechnology because it was considered a boom but if you knowing what is happening today or where i am i today i would have pursued maybe slightly different thing having said that if i have pursued different thing i might not have landed where i am today 
so like you know there's a difference as well like if you would have chased things uh, if you would like to change things that you have done in the past you might not be where you are right now unless you are unless you want how things are today with you so i would say that uh, retrospectively you would always think that i can i could have done this i could have done that i could have like you know i don't know done tons of things but at that time that was the best thing that you could think of so yeah i would say no regrets that way but yes if you would like to change yeah there are tons of things starting from i don't know when well from our point of view well you should have no regrets exactly because you are at facebook and you are a data analyst there so that's something which you know most of us dream about to land a job in the us and work for a giant company such as facebook okay so yes moving on to the next question we have a uh, who is asking us uh, given that we are in a midst of a global pandemic what will be the changes according to you in the tech industry post covid 19 uh the biggest change that i could see is already happening is the focus on work from home a lot of employers would uh would create opportunities where employees can work from home and how can they make sure that when employees are working from home they are as productive as they are when they are working from office so that is one shift in the situation which i could see having said that there are a lot of people who do not prefer to work from home because they have families and they have kids at home so keeping that in mind i think the daycare industry or the industries that you know where how kids are to be taken care of those things would evolve accordingly because if i am a if i am the one who who is working from home but also has family and that's why and have kids and that's why i cannot work from home that is something which would i think which would uh, evolve accordingly so that employers uh, so that like you know i i'm comfortable working from home do not have to worry about these things so work from home is something one and then the other thing which i would say is that uh just let me think about it uh work from home is one of the biggest thing that will evolve and the other thing which i would say is that uh, providing the uh real experiences when you are working from home like i said development in the er or v a ar or vr sector and then incorporation of the those developments in your real life job is something which could be preferred the the one thing which i would uh, the one challenge which i could see is that how companies would focus on team building activities when people are working from home so that is something which i which a lot of companies focus a lot on they like different teams they hang out with the with 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 each other like you know for offsites or for like you know different celebrations in office so how will that play out that is something which would be uh, like you know different from the industry standpoint but but yeah i'm i'm trying to think how how else things could change working from home yeah the other thing which i would say is that a lot of people would be comfortable taking the online courses from the different universities so that is something which has started happening already and that is something which will continue to happen a lot more and also people do not really have to be available in person in the university to take on that course because you should you would be able to do those things so education work from home and a lot of things which are associated with the work from home those things will those things would evolve for sure okay yeah so yes a lot of people like uh, have actually enrolled themselves in online courses and we have platforms like coursera and an academy who are providing with the certifications as well so yes a uh, very interesting question uh, we have mohit shaw who is asking about how difficult was it to get a job abroad and do the requirement like what were the requirements change compared to the hiring process in india so and what do you think about the future prospect of h1b visa in united states i don't know about h1b visa I, it's it's totally so i would say the the immigration or the visa things that is something based on the based on your employer and based on the administration in us because the way current president is things are different whoever will be the future president things could be a lot different so but having said that i would say a lot of people who were able to move to us 
on H1B based on the certain skill sets, they are having a lot more scrutiny on that. What kind of education do you have? Whether you have bachelor's, master's, what kind of work experience do you have? And how would that be relevant to the to the country in to, uh, to the US country? So that is something which a lot of people, uh, government has been putting more checks and balances in that space. So that is one thing. So and also the other thing which I would say is that the job prospects regarding US and India is, I would say, uh, Hmm. So you need to, so if you have worked with global employ like people from different locations like you know like US like Europe like Australia or like you know or Japan or uh, other people uh, other countries you would get a lot of different perspective how people perceive different situations so that helps you to broaden your horizon in terms of what are the like you know you have to be culturally sensitive with the people you have to be because the things which are very normal in India or Indian corporate world doesn't mean that they're very normal uh, in in the US corporate world. So you have to be careful, you have to be cognizant of those things. And that is something that you would get to uh, that you would be aware of when you are working with the people from the different countries. So the good thing which I would say is that happened with me when I was working in Infosys is that I worked with I worked with clients from Middle East, I worked with clients from US, and I worked with clients from what was the last one, I forgot, like some, uh, I forgot. I think it was US again. So the more, like, you know, I have worked with different, uh, uh, look, different clients who are based out of different locations. So that helps you to understand their perspective and, you know, prepare you what matters to them and what are the things that are important to them. So in an interview, I would say, the culture is one thing that you should be aware of, but all in all, also your understanding of the system, your uh, understanding of what is expected out of you from the job perspective. So those are the things which are very, very important. The good thing in my case is that I was already working in Facebook India and when I moved to US, so I was able to understand what I and I have been working with a lot of US based employers, uh, US based people at that time. So that helped me to understand what are the different things that that are like you know important and relevant and yeah these are the things which i would say for h1b and like you know the indian and the us culture difference well sure uh, most of the like most of the students plans are based on the you know current scenario on h1b because this is something where indian people put a lot of thought to before committing to masters in the us mm -hmm. okay we have Anamitra Sinha, who is asking, uh, yeah, he is saying that uh, coming from a background in biotechnology, would you get an MS in biostats or statistics? Uh, and will it be relevant if he wants to break into data science? Uh, I'm not sure about if there is something called MS in specifically biostats. To be honest, I'm not sure about that of course there is ms in a lot of statistical courses and if you if you're thinking about the statistical courses i don't think it matters whether you whether it's a biostat or normal statistics because that is something which would apply to both biotech industry as well as the non-biotech tech industry so i would say uh, stats is uh, i i don't i'm not sure like like i mentioned about biostats number one number two statistics stats is relevant to both biotech as well as the non-biotech tech industry and the other thing which uh, which i'm able to think is yes so if you have done your masters or like you know if you have pursued a uh, education in statistics then it doesn't matter what industries it is and you would it would be it won't be a challenging move from from one industry to another as long as you are planning to keep in the same domain that you are working in okay so he's uh, moving we have so obviously to get into facebook you must have been through a hiring the hiring process of facebook so uh, uh, taking on to a personal point of view turn uh, so yes what was the hiring process of Facebook like and how can you know one deal with the stress and anxiety that one suffers during interviews? So the hiring process, I can tell a story about actually the hiring process. So uh, 
that was very that was interesting for me so i, I was in infosys at that time and back in the day i was mostly looking for a change of the location because i was in the southern part of the country and i am from north india so i wanted to move to north india like delhi like you know good all, all these areas so that was the reason why i wanted to that, that was the reason why i was looking for a change so i also asked like my managers and senior managers in in infosys if i if they can move me to uh, office in chandigarh because they have a huge presence in chandigarh but but they were taking their own time and that's why i started looking out so hyderabad facebook has a office in hyderabad hyderabad was nowhere in my radar because it was you know uh, i have never thought about going there number one number two i had no idea whether facebook exists in india anyhow moving on i was applying to all these like you know tech com- uh, uh, consulting companies like deloitte pwc and all so facebook reached out to me and then when they called me they talk to me about the role so on and so forth and then in my mind when i was li- talking to that person i was like yeah sure facebook would reach out to me for sure that's what they are waiting for so i i totally thought that was a bogus call and then then i told the person yeah this is my email id send me the role and we'll take it from there so then he emailed me which i was not expecting because i thought that was a bogus call anyways he emailed it to me i went through his email id which and then i searched about the domain like you know at gmail.com or whatever that dot com was then i searched online then i realized wow it's an actual facebook offer not offer but it's an actual facebook opportunity so which i can think of so and i was like blown away by that i was like wow seriously so then i started taking things seriously so then interview process and all that happened so and so the way it happens in facebook is they like you either you apply or they reach out to they rely a lot on the referrals like you know uh, the facebook employees they rely a lot on them to refer their knowns people who are in industry in different sectors for the different roles so that is one thing and then in terms of the interview process i would say it's a discussion it's not a q it's not like you know what have you done tell uh, like you know what was your job role and all it was more of a discussion and then they'll ask you some questions of course but you don't have to be i would say be yourself don't get nervous and and answer whatever you think is right at that time uh, don't overthink it of course you would be able to get uh, all the experiences in glassdoor and linkedin like you know and all these websites who will who would share what how it is to be uh, you know get a role get a interview job interview and potentially crack it but i would say it's a lot luck based right time right place so like you know those are the things which are not in your control the only thing that you can control is be yourself so and then if it works out if it it works out if it doesn't it doesn't i wouldn't say there is a like you know an algorithm which you can take 10 steps and you will be able to take a ro- role i if it would have been like that i would have shared or like you know people would have been aware of that but it's just like you know are you in the right time right place and do you have the necessary skills that you that the company is looking for and also i can tell you that people try multiple times for the same role in the company like you know they have applied once it didn't go through after 6 months they'll reapply after 6 months they'll re- reapply so that's a normal process it's it's not something that like you know it's not easy to crack but it's not difficult as well so that's why if you are really interested in uh, and if you are pursuing it it will happen sooner or later okay yeah well um this is the recruitment scene in india now and everyone is has to face an interview <laughs> so let's let's take a different point of view here and uh, let me ask you this that uh, have you been you know on the recruiting side and uh, how do you sit through applications like how would you have been uh, like how would you play the role of a recruiter so i have not been on the recruiting side of it like you know i i do uh, i have say interviewed a couple of people but not really on the like you know not really screening process like you know whether people are saying the right things or not but in general what i would say is that they look at the resume in terms of i i don't know <laughs> i really don't know what because i have not been on that side of the world but i would say that uh, in general don't 
don't fluff if you know you know if you don't know you don't know like if you are trying to fluff i would say people are smart enough to catch that so that is that is the worst thing that you can do in your resume or in an interview that is something which i would say because you will get you will figure that out well like you know after a while that yeah i i don't because the credibility is credibility is something that you would like to show in an interview whether you know something or whether you don't know something so that is the only thing that i can i think i'm yeah i'm i have not spent much time on the recruiting side of the company so i'm not sure about other things okay so uh, as we talked about the online certificates uh, certifications before we have another question from tushar shrivastav and he is asking if uh, does a foreign certifications for example coursera really help in the uh, in really help in improving the required skill sets for landing a job in companies like facebook i would say the only certification will not help you the certification along with the work experience yes because if you have a work experience and if you have a certification it's just a credibility that you are building about yourself in your resume or in your application if you are saying that i have done five certifications but you do not have any work experience it might not be easier to do it that way okay mm -hmm. yes we have uh, kuldeep padalia who is asking uh, how a medical student can learn data analysis Hmm. I would say that uh, if you have no, if you have, if okay, so if you are a medical student and you are not working in, I assume, I, I'll take two scenarios: whether you're working in an industry or whether you're not working in an industry. If you're not working in industry, I would recommend start taking, like, take some courses, like you know, learn some languages that are that are like, like I said, basic for the. uh you know for the data data roles any data role so like sql python or some machine le learning courses these are the basic things that you can learn on your a lot of them you can learn on your own i'm not saying you will be able to learn every single thing that is one thing but if you are already working in an industry or you're like you know over there also you will have to learn these things but try to get a i would say from medical student it would be difficult yeah i would say that try to get into an industry where you would be able you would get an opportunity to work on these roles provided you have done some online courses and certifications because if you have not done any groundwork or homework on your own it would be difficult for anyone to entertain you so do your homework like you know learn some of these courses do some of these certifications then try to get into any like you know company the other thing which i would say is that never stop trying like a lot of times what happen is that people assume that i have like you know i have this awesome cv or i i was the topper in my college i should get a fantastic job out of my college not necessarily and also even if you are end up getting the awesome job doesn't mean that you'll be able to survive because the pressure and all those things are enormous over there so you need to keep yourself growing you need to be like you know keep yourself upskilling and that's how you will be able to move forward in your career so for a medical student perspective i would say take some online courses do some certifications and then try to enter whoever can offer you even the like you know the starting role in these fields okay so i guess that would surely have answered uh, the doubt of one of our peers so ankush uh, we will uh, surely conclude this session after this one last question and uh, like uh, some like along with this question if there's some final message you would like to give so the question goes uh, as a person associated with the tech industry what is your motivation to go to work every day is there a point in your life where money stops being a major factor yeah yeah that's a that's a good one actually whoever asked this so let me give me a minute i'll i want to uh yeah so the motivation is very simple and easy you get to work with one of the smartest people in the world out there you get to solve the problems which no one else has solved for like you know no one has encountered these problems in the world before and by solving these problems you are 
effectively setting the industry standards so that like you know people would follow what they should be doing and like you know how it is the other thing so that is what motivates me to get to my work or to like you know to do my job every other day the other thing is uh, i would say that money is a important factor but after a while like one after a while money is just one of the factor like you know uh, i would say that success people attribute it to money not necessarily at a times it is money but after a while it could be a lot of things depending on how things have changed for you after a while it could be like you know having the right partner or after a while it could be just having a stable job look at your parents like a lot of uh, at least my parents ended up working the same job throughout their life throughout their career so changing the job or all those all those things might not be like you know one uh, like that that might not be the success or the looking forward thing to it's just making sure that you are doing the right thing you are comfortable you are stable in your life and space so that is something which like you know which i look forward to every other day rather than yes once you uh, money is important factor to start with but once you have worked in industry for a couple of years that is something which you are like i'm comfortable with i i need something else to keep it going that is something which i would say are the important things and those things change over the time like you know whatever your priorities today are it could be becoming a eight pointer becoming a nine pointer getting a internship getting a job five years down the line it could be super different it would be no that is something which i am not bothered about all i need is a stable job five, maybe further down the line all i need to be is like you know buy a new house all i need to be is just be with my family so those are the things which will change and that's that's very normal so i would say Uh, think about what motivates you for me these are some of the things which motivate me and that keeps me going the other thing which you mention is so i would i would recommend uh, one thing whenever you are taking any work any activity or any pro, uh, any project or anything down the line even today or down the line try to ask if it has three qualities the three qualities that i'm talking about is fierce funny and hard explain what all of these means so fierce means is it aspirational will you be able to grow will you be able to like you know achieve what you want to achieve that's fierce funny does it make you laugh is it self deprecating is it comedic do you enjoy that hard does it have a emotional touch does it are you able to connect with that thing so what i would say is that fierce funny and hard out of these three things if the opportunity has two of the qualities or two of the elements you should go for it if it doesn't have at least two of the elements you might want to revise it whether it does really make sense because at the end of the day you just want to be happy and you want to achieve success because and if these three things would help you to gain one of or two of those things then i think you should go for it but if it doesn't then think about it whether it is the right thing for you so that is something where i would close my note on i would say thanks a lot guys it was great answering your questions feel free to ping me on linkedin or on facebook whatever it is uh career and don't don't get worried with covid and you know all those things these things will happen i would say covid hopefully but the recessions in one way or other will keep happening all whatever happen is you will come out as a lot more resilient and a lot more stronger down the line so that's why i like i said i happen to be passed out in that 2008 where it was 2009 when there was crisis and i'm i i feel that a lot of people from my batch came out a lot stronger so i think that is something which i would see a lot of these things are happening to you so stay safe take care and always enjoy well ankush uh really i am i'm very impressed with your mantra and given that uh, you had passed from the crisis back in 2009 and how you've grown over these years surely will serve as an inspiration to many so with this uh, we would like to conclude the session thank you so much ankush for being here uh, to the viewers i would like to uh, tell you that we'll be releasing a feedback form hit like and subscribe to this channel if you like this session again tomorrow morning at 11 am we'll have another ama session with mr anshu shekhar and gopesh tulsian who are senior software engineers at apple so join us again here at 11 am tomorrow and we can end the stream now ankush you can be in meeting for a while
tomorrow. And we can end the stream now. Ankush, you can be in meeting for a while.